It's BB, I'm back. It's been a minute. I am late per my usual fashion to the last 10 decks hashtag. And it is a VR to Jonathan. Yes, it is Jonathan Daly. So we're, we're good, I'm good. That's not his um handle on YouTube, but I'll put all the information in the description. This is really fun. I feel like I do these anyway, but like, this is just a different way to look at it. Like I saved all the, like I saved up 10 and this should be pretty accurate apart from something I just got yesterday, but I'm gonna be making a video about that. So these are essentially my last 10 decks and they're so cool and aesthetic, like just looking at the boxes. <laughs> I'm going to jump in. I think these are in order of when I purchased them or when I received them even. So I think they're like from oldest to newest as far as like the last 10. So the first precious baby is the Lucid Dreams Tarot. And this was something that kind of interested me before this one came out. This um, came out in a kind of linen oatmeal-y color and I liked it but it was kind of a little too <coughs> like love and light or I don't know like you'll see once I open it up with the with the images um, what I'm referring to but the images were kind of light and star seedy, some of them, and then the light borders kind of made it kind of further away from my aesthetic. And when I saw this, I don't remember what version this is called, if it says it anywhere. I'll, it'll probably say it in the book, but when I saw this version, that was based in black and it had black borders. It was like, my prayers had been answered, my dreams had come true. So this is apparently the fourth edition. It is the Beginner's Tarot Deck and Guidebook, Lucid Dreams Tarot. It's made by Saint Soleil. Look at like the 90s, like Gregorian, <laughs> um, like a very exciting packaging. This box is everything. It's so amazing. It has like a linen finish. I'm gonna do a deep dive on it, so I really don't know why I'm spending so much time. So let's just go straight in. So as you can see, the black borders really provide like a kind of gothic feel and a more almost medieval tone to the deck. It's still in order, like I said, because I'm going to be doing a walkthrough. Some of the images seem like more classical like this and medieval, which we love, like Renaissance. This looks kind of, I don't know, a little bit post medieval, but so Renaissance would be more accurate. And then there are things like this that are more new age and kind of the new wave of new age. Um, I think about like Danielle Noel, things like that. And so the black really stylizes it for me and grounds it and gives it this kind of alluring, very vintage and like dark element. It's also very like, it's very magic, right? Like black is very, like it's classy, it's sophisticated, it's stylish, whatever, which all of that appeals to me. But then it's also Black is very witchy. And the gold with the black feels very Egyptian for some reason. If you haven't seen this deck before, it has keywords on the top for an upright position and keywords on the bottom for a reversed position. And then it also has glyphs here. So this would be Mars in Gemini and 
this is the air element. I always hesitate with the element glyphs. Does anyone else? Like, what is wrong with me? But a really, really decadent and beautiful deck. I think decadence might be the theme. <laughs> I don't know. You can tell me um, for my last 10 decks haul. I also really dig the backs. Love that sun image. It's very cool. Keep an eye out for my walkthrough of this. It should be coming soon. Maybe I'll film it. I'll maybe upload it like the next video after this one. I like to stagger my hashtags versus my deck walkthroughs. Does anyone else care about that? Like, I don't know. I always try to like make a pattern. I feel like my... I hit my camera. Okay, that's better. Okay, so deck number two is the Albano Weight Tarot. And this has a little bit of a story. So let me just open it up and I'll get into it. So I was never attracted to the Rider Waite Smith imagery. And it's the reason why I didn't get a tarot deck until about 2013. And then I found out about, um, I think I had the, the borderless edition, which is the same coloring, I believe, as the um, centennial edition, which was really popular at the time. So I didn't get that in 2013. I got other things. But I got it in maybe 2018 and maybe 2017, I can't remember. And I liked it, it was good for learning purposes and things like that. And I found myself over time not really enjoying the muted color palette that that deck had and really wanting something more eccentric and brighter, kind of the opposite of what I thought I had been looking for or wanted. And I think I asked in a Discord that I'm in, you know, what, what deck should I try? And of course my always reliable friend Meg was like, you should try out the Albano Weight. And I said, you know what, I will. And so I ordered this on Amazon. And not only do I really, really love the colors and how cool they are, I also realized that years ago when I was watching tarot readings online to kind of help supplement my tarot education, that I had seen people using this deck and had been so attracted to these backs, but they don't tell you what decks they're using most of the time in those videos, or at least they didn't used to. And so I never knew that these beautiful gold suns were the Albano Weight deck. So it was like this really awesome double gift or this surprise on top of this gift to myself that this was a deck that I enjoy and love the colors in, but also one that as from a collector's standpoint, I always really wanted whichever <laughs> RWS deck had those backs. Does that make sense? I know that like my thinking was really choppy there, but I'm so happy with this and my my end all be all like wish for a Rider Waite Smith deck is the Golden Rider, but this is just really really enjoyable and I have read with it and ooh it shoots from the hip. It's really good. <laughs> it's really good. It's really straightforward, so easy, easy to understand and I'm just so stoked on these backs like I think this was like the perfect the perfect RWS for me at this point in my life hopefully I'll have it forever 
Number three is the Modern Nirvana Oracle. And this a friend of mine had that is not a tarot tube friend. It's an in real life friend. And we don't get to see each other very often, but she posted on her Instagram, and this was years ago when this first came out. I don't know when this first came out. Let's see. I don't know if it'll say, because she had it when it was indie, I think. I think maybe, maybe that's wrong. Maybe she got it from like Target's website or something, you know? Or Amazon, maybe she did get it off Amazon. The point is, it has been on and off of my, so this was, this copyright is 2022, but I, I feel like it must have came out in 2021 or earlier. Maybe it didn't, maybe I'm just tripping and time doesn't exist. So I feel like this has flip-flopped so much on my list. And I was kind of thrown off by some of the imagery. I did like these, but I was like, okay, what am I gonna do with these? I don't know anything about runes. But um, if you've seen, I don't know which video it is, but Lisa Pepez talked about this one or these cards in the deck, they're really only, I think like a fifth of the deck. And these are some of the most interesting cards in the book. So they provide a an exercise, like a self-care exercise to do with um, whatever the mantra is of this rune and like the the book is so so well done it's so deep it's so insightful it's very unique i got this card recently resolution and it just like blew my socks off like it was so so good and it's so nice because i liked this deck based on the imagery itself but i wasn't i don't know i just like couldn't pull the trigger and it's so cool when you get both. It's so, it's such a great thing when you get style and substance. And I wish that that wasn't, I don't know, the exception or I didn't have to be so stoked on that, you know, like, but it just doesn't always work that way. The thing I will say is that like some of these don't seem like sometimes like this seems like a different deck than this because this seems very 80s and this seems just very like mystical. But you know, I don't mind it because I like both of them. And then this doesn't seem 80s at all. Maybe, maybe 70s. But again, the color story here is really cool. I really like the design. So the borders, the font, the keywords are really great. I love the use of light and like shimmer. It's a really, really cool deck. And you know, she's not vapid. She's not surface level. Let me know if you have this deck. You know what pushed me over the edges? I saw it. I saw it again on a couple different channels. Lisa Pepez was one of them. And then I forget who the other person was, but they had just recently featured this deck on a video. And I was like, you know, I need to give that a chance. And I'm so happy I did. Okay, deck number four. I know, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. So I posted um, a 21 tarot questions video. And in that I mentioned Majestic Earth as my one that got away. And a very kind and generous person reached out to me and said, you know what? I have that and I don't use it. And would you like it? And I just about cried. I know this deck was very popular on Tarot Tube. I know we 
we all know a lot about it. But I don't think I knew that I needed this deck until it was too late. I don't think I knew how moving and how me it could feel until it was too late. And I feel so, so blessed to even be able to see this in person, to hold it in my hands. Sorry, there's a plane or a helicopter. It's just beyond gorgeous and even more so in person. And I don't even know what I was thinking. Like, why wouldn't I think that this, that would, it's okay. It also was like never really in my budget. So there's that. Wow. It kind of reminds me of like calendars I used to get from Barnes and Noble when I was like a teenager or in my twenties. And I was like, I had moved out of the house for the first time and this was the kind of art that I was really into along with like vintage 1920s, like posters and things like that. But, oh wow, it was just, it's just so special and it just strikes a chord in me. And I'm just, I'm really humbled to, to have it. I just feel really, really lucky. Okay, deck number five. You may have seen this in my last video. If you haven't, go check out my last video. <laughs> um, it's the Age of Aquarius Tarot. I have done a really good job of resisting um, like a lot of decks in this style, but I could not do that with this one because there are images like so and a whole suit of pearls like are you kidding my favorite cards in this deck tend to be yeah the pearl suit as well as some of these darker cards let me see if i can find one not necessarily the jungly ones but also like the the people the photography of people in this deck like throws me off and it's gonna be something that I need to figure out <laughs> how I'm gonna deal with. But things like this like blow my mind and I love them. I love them, love them. Let's see. Oh yeah, I, lo I love the cup suit too. The cup suit's really, really good. But I have a full walkthrough of this. Yeah, like some of these just really hit and then some of these take me out of that fantasy that I'm looking for. I mean, it's a different type of fantasy, but it's not mine. I don't wanna like go through every card of this deck, but it is really beautiful. I think it's currently sold out, but um, it does come in and out of stock. Yeah, like, can I just have a pearl deck? Like, is that what I need? You know, I love the koi too. It's, it's all about the cups and the pearls. This one's really cool too. I talk more in depth about um, these images and I go through the book. So if you're interested in that, I will put it in the cards actually, that's what I'll do. I love this night. Don't really love that one, but I do love this. <laughs> okay, that's my number five is the Age of Aquarius Tarot. Okay, number six is the Tarot of Iona. And I've known about this deck for a really long time. 
have not, oh, uh, warning, lots of adult content here. I never, I mean, I knew it was out of stock, or I'm sorry, out of print, but, so yeah, I kind of just like gave up on that and, and was like, okay, well, we can just, we'll get it eventually. And this is a reprint, so it, you can tell that it's like, I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell it's like a scanned image and printed. It is the right dimensions, but it doesn't have the extra card. And I'll show you, I think it's this one. And I think what they did was they included, so this is a separate card and it's like right here and it's blank and then it just has this hand, like the rest of the arm, the hand, and like holding the sun, or I'm sorry, the moon, the sun's behind her. Um, so yeah, I, I guess my point is, <laughs> I'm rambling and my thoughts are scattered, so, so sorry. I don't know what made me decide that it was okay to get this. I just figured it's like never gonna come back in to print it's just, it was just a one-time thing. It's a majors only deck. And I just thought it was way too wild and crazy and special. I need to find something to keep it in that isn't just this gross, like flimsy plastic. I don't even know if the artist is like still alive. I should probably do some more research on this. I had researched it before, but it's been years. But I did see it, you know, for a really good price on Etsy by a store in the Ukraine that I have shopped from before. That is really great. And sells legit decks too. So, I don't know. Tell me what you know about the Iona deck, but it's always really, really intrigued me. I guess I'm doing a walkthrough. <laughs> that was all of them. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my number six though. Number seven. I just backed a Kickstarter a few months ago by the same Urania Press. I believe this was a Kickstarter originally that I did not back and I realized, holy crap, this is so up my alley and so my style and I need it, need it. So I did get it. I think I got it on Etsy and I did purchase the guidebook. Like there's a large guidebook that goes with it. And it is the Tarot Emblemata. And this is a tarot that is based on, or I guess features, Renaissance era emblems here you go renaissance emblems and then it has like this is a keyword interpretation guide but then i have like a big they have like a big red book that has a lot more information i love this deck i actually did my first reading with it a few days ago uh, maybe a week ago and it was so good it's very deep it's very esoteric. I guess that's kind of what you get, right? When you're combining historical emblems with this esoteric practice. And then the long descriptions in the book are really, really interesting. I'm getting more and more into writing on cards. I think that's really fun because it just means like I'm always learning as I'm going because they're all so different. I'm not getting, I'm not getting beginner's decks that have all the same keywords on them, you know? I'm getting decks that are obscure and they have poetry or they have the artist's interpretation or a mantra or things like that. And I say that after showing you a beginner's deck, but that one's just different, okay? <laughs> That one doesn't count, but how good would this look with the Lucid Dreams Tarot? 
I, I just love history. And these are the kind of black decks that I am really into. I had a few like black and gold decks and I got rid of them because they weren't working. I wasn't pulling for them. I didn't really feel a connection to them. I don't know. Um, for example, I didn't, I've never had the Magnolia Tarot, but something about that one, because I used to have one, I think it was from Biddy Tarot, and it was black and it had gold images and it was like very cartoony, but like modern, like very minimal. Let me know if you know which one I'm talking about. And I read with it a little bit, but it just like didn't super appeal to me. And then I just thought like, okay, black is one of my favorite colors, but like, why am I not into it? Like in a deck, why do I need more? And I think it was more, I need more than just a black background and like a gold image, you know? Like if it's gonna do that, it needs to like, have more information or more interest and also i think a big difference is the style of illustration i don't know that's me like riffing like thinking like okay what are the reasons like exploring you know the corners of my mind but i don't know if that makes any sense but i don't know it just feels different and like people rave about the Magnolia Tarot and I get it. And the imagery is beautiful. Maybe because, is that one a Pip one too? Like, I guess that's the thing too, is like this doesn't have a, a suit where it's just like one sword, two sword, three sword, or, you know, the pentacles. Like it's pippish, but like all the images mean something unique and it's not just like three pentacles next to each other. I think maybe that's the appeal is like it, they have like a, a different meaning, like a, a deeper meaning because they have the tarot meaning and then they have, you know, the, the Renaissance emblem and what that means in history. So that's my tarot emblemata. Number... Uh, eight, eight is the Love Oracle of Eden. It's so funny. Um, I had wanted to, I had ordered this deck and wanted to make a dedicated video for it. And then the, I think the day after I got it or the day before I got it or the day of, it was just like one of those um, tarot readings from a bitch. Um, I did an in-depth walkthrough. <laughs> I was like, oh no. And I know that like, we can all do walkthroughs, you know, but I always have this fear like that it very much looks like copycatting. Like, and I never feel that way with anyone else. I only ever feel that way about me. And then, or I feel like it's just like, I'm gonna wait it out. Like I'll do one still, but I'm not gonna do one within like a week of someone else doing one. And it's funny because like, I remember when the green glyphs came out and like everybody, like everybody did one. I'm gonna open this, I'm not wasting your time. But, so like, why am I sitting here thinking like, oh, I shouldn't do one because someone else just did. Silly, silliness I say. But, this is a deck of photography by someone known as the Tog Father. And I have been following their Instagram for a long time because not only are they so, so, so talented when it comes to photography, they tend to focus on more inclusion in a classical setting. I will get like more into the cards and all that sort of thing at a different date but just look at the beauty. Look at the pure beauty. And then every being in this, or every person in this deck is referred to as a being. And I believe all the pronouns in this deck are they. It's so romantic. It's so sensual. It's so luxurious. 
it doesn't feel modern. I think the only thing that feels modern to me is like the the very like radical amount of like equity in this deck, you know? Because that really wasn't as much of a thing until recently. But if you would have told me like apart from that that these images were taken in like 1994 i'd be like oh okay as you can see too like they're in different cards there are different types of queer flags it is a very queer deck which i love here's another one and this deck is really about self-love and oh this one's like one of my faves if not my favorite the colors it's just the composition like the oh, even the mirror so good a witch it's just these are just so magnificent so magnificent And all of the images are described. So you get a sense of what the photographer was going for, what the story is, the symbology in the image, which is also very, very cool. Because that doesn't always happen. Okay, so that's my number eight. And we've already had, including this one, we've had two Oracle decks, right? My number nine and 10 are both Oracle as well. And if you know me, you know that I don't really, I don't know, I, I don't really buy as many oracles. But lately I've kind of been more drawn to it and have felt like that type of guidance has been what I needed more than like racking my brain to interpret tarot and I guess I mean that in the sense that like it's easier for me to interpret tarot for other people but for myself I feel like I'm going to um the first things in my mind or the worst things in my mind or maybe sometimes it's the opposite where I'm trying to write it off like it's good you know and I just it's not someone else telling you like what you need to hear it's just me trying to like fit into the box like what I want to hear or like I just said, it's me being like, everything's terrible, it's bad, it's bad, bad, bad. <laughs> um, so Oracle has been a, a really great way for me to like step back and, and be able to like focus on my own care. And it's kind of like a reminder of, um, you know, how do I like best focus today? And like, what do I need to release? And like, what can I, um, what can I do today to like improve my relationship with um, my environment or myself or both? So in that, on that note, um, the death doula. I have wanted this since it came out, but I guess just never justified it. I also know there are people who like had feelings about this one, had feelings about maybe, I don't know, the creator, I mean, don't quote me if that's not right, but like, come on. You, you see this and you know that like I had to do it, right? You, you're like, Bibi, this is, this is very, this is very, your gig. I have pulled a few cards. I have not used it in a spread or to supplement a tarot reading, which I am very excited to do. I dig kind of the most these abstract images. I love that. I know this deck is no stranger to YouTube. I also love these ones. I love the ones that have like a black background, some lighting, and then some 
Flora. This one's really cool too. It's it's noisy because it's very matte. It's almost um it feels almost textured. It's so matte. Yeah, this one. A vibe. A vibe. I bet this would look great with the invisible light tarot. Oh yeah, this one's my fave. <laughs> ah, the colors. These are like, <laughs> this is gonna sound so weird and don't steal it from me. But this like is what I think of when I think of like, oh, my wedding colors. Like <laughs> just something very different from what like maybe you're used to seeing. Great, so good. So that's the death doula. I'll just show you the backs because they're so cool. <laughs> love it. I think people, I've heard people say they don't like the backs, but I, I love a simple back like that. Uh, that deck would also probably look, I'm trying to like not show you. You've seen it. It's fine. Um, the death doula probably looks really good with the Albano weight. I should do a new perfect pairs, huh? Or playing with pairs, whatever. Okay, so my number 10, we've made it, is the Runners of the Sun Oracle. I've also wanted this for a good amount of time. Really happy to have been able to get it. I actually got the Runners of the Sun and Death Doula both on Sage Centaurus. Um, it's an LA-based, I think it's a metaphysical shop. I will link it. I will try to link like where you can get all of these decks, but... I was able to purchase these two on Sage Centaurus and like after pay them. So I was able to do the pay in four and that's how I was able to get both. So this is like a trippy dippy vintage inspired kind of psychedelic cute little baby. How cute is that? And I think if you want walkthroughs of any of these, just let me know. Love this. Love this. This is such a cool deck. This is the second edition, I believe, because I think the first one had uh, maybe black borders. I think that's what I remember. I first saw this deck on Johnny Key's channel. I'm trying to, like, why can't I think of her name? All I keep thinking is Johnny Key and <laughs> Madame Beth Sheba. Isn't it like cat some oh my gosh, I know it. Like I know it because I watch it like crazy. Okay. Um, but I first saw it on hers and she talked about this and I was like, wow, yes. And ever since she first featured it, I thought I was gonna get it like immediately. And that just didn't happen. I ended up moving. It's been a while. But I'm so happy to finally have it in my collection and be able to kind of dive into its magic oh I said magic funny <laughs> and it's it feels very soulful and it's very connected to I feel like ancestry and past lives but also like aesthetically it just looks like somebody collaged a museum together and I love that because I love museums and I love I know I keep saying this, but like, I love history. <laughs> I love it. I love animals. I love saturation and color. I love intentional use of color and like limited color stories. Like all of these are just speaking to me so much. This, like get out. It's so good. I just, I don't have any words. It's really, really well done. So good, so good, so good. And I think, I think I've seen Rose Honey Ritual show this deck too. I mean, I'm sure if she hasn't, I'm sure she has it. I'm sure if she hasn't shown it that she has the deck because she has everything because she's like a witch of manifestation and 
just having all the best decks ever. Not literally. She just, <laughs> she just always has the good stuff. So this is Runners of the Sun. That's my number 10. Let's put a couple of these together and maybe you can see like how cute aesthetically this was looking to me. It feels really great to have like my last 10 decks be things that have really, I don't know, come through, right? Because you know, there's nothing like that feeling when you get a deck and it's not it, <laughs> you know? It's just not, it's not as exciting or cool as you wanted it to be. And maybe it's been sitting on your desk and I don't know, you just like all of your excitement for it just kind of left the minute you opened it up. So you didn't necessarily feel the feels. Do you ever get that? We're gonna move this. Let me know if you do, because that's happened to me a few times and it's such a bummer. Also, please let me know if you have any requests of certain videos that I could do for you. I'm happy to do that. I also got a notification from YouTube that I can start creating, what's it called, um, memberships. So I've been playing with the idea and I don't really know what to offer in these tiers. If you have suggestions of what you'd like in terms of extra content, yeah, I mean, I'd love to know your ideas, if you have any. If not, then I'll just wing it and I'll put some tears in and I'm very open to feedback on what works and what doesn't or what you want to see, what you don't want to see. But if you could subscribe, that would help me a lot. If you would like this video, if you enjoyed it, that would help me a lot. And, uh, you know, I'm really thankful you're here. Really thankful you're my friend, that you're curious. And my mom's coming, I gotta go.